All right, guys, so for the uh, trig intro test review, let's go over some of the problems here and uh, walk through some of the steps here. Um, so first off, we are trying to just use um, side lengths in order to find an unknown angle measure. Okay, so in this problem, the angle we want to find is that guy. Um, and theta is usually a variable used to represent angles. Um, so if we want to label these sides here, um, the, uh, the one across from the right angle, so this bottom side is, of course, going to be the hypotenuse. Um, the two being all the way through to the other side of the triangle is the opposite side. And then the three is the adjacent side because, again, the, it's connected to the angle, but it's not the hypotenuse. Okay, so we need to ask ourselves in this problem, which sides are we given? Okay, um, sometimes they'll give you all three, but in this one we only know two. We know the opposite and we know the adjacent. So going back to um, Sokotoa, right, knowing that sine is opposite over adjacent, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. I might have said sine wrong. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse in case I said it backwards. Um, but the Sokotoa little memory device there tells us to, uh, if we're dealing with opposite and adjacent, it's going to be tangent. So we're going to write ourselves a little trig equation. The tangent of some unknown angle theta equals the opposite side length over the adjacent side length, okay? And the way you're going to solve this on your calculator, since we are trying to find that angle, we need to get rid of the tangent. So the way you get rid of tangent is you do the inverse tangent. We're going to do that to both sides, and what you're actually going to type into your calculator is the inverse tangent. Okay, and you're going to have to probably press the second button to get that little inverse. Um, and then do 2 divided by 3. Okay, and just make sure you are in degree mode. And that should give you the answer. Um, and let me just verify this on my calculator. That one should be 33 point, uh, what do they want, nearest degree. So 33.7, so 34 degrees. Okay, um, number two is going to be similar, very similar setup. It's another problem where we're finding um, an angle measure, so we'll just walk through the, the setup there. Um, if, if this is our angle we're trying to find right there, that means the 9 is the opposite side, because again, it's all the way through the other side of the triangle. Um, the 14 is the hypotenuse, because it is across from the right angle. So for opposite and hypotenuse, we must use sine. So the trig equation will be the sine of theta must equal the opposite side, which is 9 over 14. So you will uh, get your answer on your calculator by doing the sine inverse. You always use inverse when you're finding angles of 9 divided by 14. And that should get you the answer for number 2. Okay. Um, next couple problems, we're trying to now find a side length instead of an angle measure. So um, still Sokotoa stuff, just going to set it up um, or kind of finish it out a little bit differently. Um, in this case, we're trying to find um, a side length. They're giving us this 46 degree angle. Um, we also know the right angle there. You don't really use the 90 degree angle. You use the um, acute angle. Um, if we needed to, we could find angle B down there knowing that they add up to 180, but we don't really need that. Um, so let's think about it again. If, if uh, the 46 degree angle is here, I know the opposite side length is the one all the way across. And the 12.1 side there is the hypotenuse because it is across from the 90. So same kind of thing, Sokotoa still. Um, this time we know the angle measure though. Okay, so we're going to use that. So if it's opposite and hypotenuse, that's going to have to be the sine. Now the, we know the angle measure is 46 degrees. Okay, so that's not a variable there. The variable is going to be on the other side of the equation. Um, sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so x over 12.1. And the way we are going to get x by itself, since it's being divided by 12.1, we will just multiply both sides by 12.1. Okay, and again, it's just a calculator problem. Again, make sure you're in degree mode. Always double check that, because um, that will definitely throw things off. Um, and I'm getting, they want it rounded to the nearest tenth, so uh, 8.7 for x. Okay, moving along, number four. Um, similar type of problem here. We want to find a side length. Let's see what we're given here. Um, the five is definitely the hypotenuse. In this case, the angle we're using is that one, so the x is the adjacent side. Okay, down here would be the opposite. 
we don't need that in this problem. We're just using adjacent and hypotenuse. Um, so that is going to be cosine, right? So cosine, the cosine of the angle, 66 degrees, equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, and this one's going to finish the same way as the last one. We're just going to multiply um, both sides by 5. And it's going to be 5 times the cosine of 66 degrees will equal x. And again, another calculator problem. And that's going to get us our answer of 2.0. Okay, just one thing. If um, if when you set up your fraction here, if, if it was the other way around, if it was 5 over x, you would have to first multiply both sides by x. And then your next step would be to divide by the, uh, the cosine of 66 in this case. So just always multiply by whatever's in the denominator. That's how you clear out um, division. All right, next topic we uh, covered then was uh, converting um, from degree measurements to radians and back and forth. Um, so if you see something with a pi in it, chances are it's radians, like number five. And so we'll need to change it to degrees. Um, and then number six, you can see the degree um, symbol after the 300. So that's going to be degrees, obviously. We'll change it to radians. But the trick is the conversion factor that we use is always that pi equals 180 degrees okay so what we're going to do if we're going to convert two degrees what you can do is you can just replace the pi with 180 okay and it's over 4 and 180 divided by 4 we'll get to your quick answer of 45 degrees okay i'm um, going the other way if you want to start if you start in degrees okay number six here 300 degrees we're going to multiply by a conversion factor, pi um, over 180. Okay, this is just kind of like changing units of, in like dimensional analysis, you know. Um, you're, you're really multiplying by a fraction, but the numerator and the denominator of the fraction are actually equal to each other because um, this is pi radians, and we know that that equals 180 degrees. And the trick here is some people just kind of whip out a calculator and give a decimal answer, and that's usually not the way we simplify these things. What you want to do is think about it um, as a reduced fraction. So it's going to be, for example, if the 300 over 180, and then we'll multiply by the pi in the end. And you just need to reduce the fraction as far as you can. Um, the 300 divided by 180, they both can be divided by 60. Okay, so your final answer is going to be 5 pi um, over 3. Okay, so we just reduced the, uh, the fraction there and then brought the pi back along for the ride. Okay, then these last four are gonna be using um, unit circle patterns or special right triangles. So let me set up um, that first quadrant. Again, I've done this in a couple videos, so make sure you have this down and really can get these patterns because it's gonna help answer all of these type of questions. Um, so the idea there is if, test review here. Um, number seven, we need the sine of 13 pi over six. So first off, most of you guys are probably gonna want that in terms of degrees because we're not as familiar with radians. Okay, that's totally fine. So 13 pi over 6, um, 13 times the 180 over 6, that's giving me 390 degrees. So we need the sine of that. Okay, now 390, if you think about it, is more than a full circle, right? Because you can go around a full rotation and then keep going, right, to get to, uh, to 390. So the idea is if we go 360, we would have to go 30 more, right? So that's our angle. You can always subtract or add 360 if you remember we can get a coterminal angle. So this question is really just boiling down to what is the sine of 30 degrees? Okay, um, the sine of 30 degrees. If the sine of 13 pi over 6 is really boiling down to the sine of 30, okay, which we know is positive 1 half. Okay, all right, let's do another one. Um, cosine for 210. All right, the cosine for 210. So let's think about, I always draw a little sketch. Let's ask myself, all right, where would 210 end up at? So 210, okay, if we start here, right? I'm gonna go all the way around, that's 180. I need to go 30 more, right? So I'm 30 degrees past 180. Okay, that little green angle there is the reference angle, right? Always getting you back to 180 in that quadrant um, is 30 degrees. So what we're going to say is, all right, my reference angle is 30 degrees. 
So let's think about, all right, what's the sine, I'm sorry, what's the cosine for a 30 degree angle, right? So two ways to do it. You can either continue the pattern and, and fill in coordinates of the unit circle, like doing the one, two, three counting thing, or out where our angle really is, right? Because our angle is not really 30 degrees, but it's 30 degrees is its reference angle. Okay, so let's think about our angle actually ended up in quadrant three, right? We're over here, and if you think about, cosine is always the x-coordinate, okay? Because the adjacent side is always the x-axis. So in this case, the x, we're, we're on like the negative side, right? Where the x values would be negative over here. So the cosine of 210, since it's in quadrant three, right? Quadrant three down here, the x's are negative, is the same value as the root three over two, it is just negative. Okay, and that's gonna be the final answer to this question. Cosine of 210 is negative root three over two because we knew its reference angle is 30. Okay, and then the last couple, um, still gonna use unit circle. Um, this time they're kind of giving you the answer. You know, they're giving you like one of the coordinates. They want you to find the angle. Right, and what they're saying is, it looks kind of fancy, but solve each equation for zero is less than or equal to theta, less than 360. So they're just saying solve it for um, one time around the circle. Okay, like for example, if the answer is, is 30 degrees, we wouldn't have to say 390 also. Like what happened in number seven, remember 390 and 30 were like co-terminal. We're just gonna give the um, answers that are between zero and 360. So let's think about what we can do. Okay, so cosine equals negative one half. So, I need to find out which reference angle. I'm gonna ignore the negative for, for now, because in the first, okay, so let's, let's jot that down. The reference angle equals 60 degrees, right? Now, these, these questions generally have two answers, okay? There's gonna be two different quadrants. We first need to think about where is the cosine actually negative? Okay, so if we think about in which quadrants is cosine negative. Cosine deals with x values, okay? X values are negative over in quadrant two and in quadrant three, okay? So what I need to do is place a 60 degree reference angle in each of those quadrants, okay? Reference angles always get back to the x-axis. So I would need a 60 degree angle there, okay? So let's get this answer first. What is that angle measure in standard position, right? So from here to there, what is the actual angle measure? Well, it's 60 short of 180, right? So that would have to be 120 degrees. So that's one of our answers. Okay, and then separately, let's get a little more space in here. Um, in quadrant three, we said there's an answer as well, right? So in quadrant three, if we had a 60 degree angle there getting back to the to 180, but we were 60 degrees past 180, right? What would the measure in standard position be? From there all the way to there would be 180 plus 60, right? Which should be 240 degrees. Okay, so both of those angles, they notice they both have a reference angle of 60, okay, in both um, cases, the x coordinates were negative. That's why we put it in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. Okay, so expect two answers generally for pretty much all of these for the equation. Okay, um, number 10, the, uh, the tangent. When does tangent equal negative one? So let's go back to our reference angle here, and then we're just going to put it in the correct quadrants. because we really need to know where is the tangent negative one, okay? And this one's a little bit trickier. Um, let's think about, all right, here's our coordinate. I need the tangent to be negative, right? So tangent is y over x. Where would the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate be negative? Let's think about that. Okay, in quadrant one, y and x are both positive, right? So y over x would be positive. In quadrant two, um, what happens in quadrant two. The y's are positive, but the x's are negative. Okay, so that, that would work, right? If y was positive, but x were negative, then y over x would be negative if you had you know, one of each. So let's think about if we put a 45 degree reference angle in quadrant two, 
right? Reference angle always gets you to the x-axis. Let's ask ourselves, what would be the actual angle measure? The reference angle is 45, but what's the actual angle in standard position? Well, we're 45 degrees less than 180. Okay, so one answer here would be 45, uh, I'm sorry, 180 minus 45, which is 135 degrees. Okay, let's get the other one going. Okay, what other quadrant? Let's think about this. If we're down in quadrant three, is y, what's y over x? Well, in quadrant three, y and x, right? Imagine if there's a point down there, the y and the x are both negative. Okay, so would y over x be negative? No, right? A negative over a negative is positive. So we need to be in quadrant four. Okay, so we're, we're gonna be 45 degrees shy. Remember, you always go back to the x-axis. If you're fourth quadrant, you're going back to 360. So what angle measure, standard position goes this way, would that be? If we're 45 short of a full circle, 360 minus 45 gets us our final answer of 315 degrees. Okay, so that should get you through the review, and uh, please let me know if there are any questions. We set up a new um, first quadrant. Okay, and let's just throw like, for example, the 30 degree angle in there. Let's say it looks like that. Let's say that's a 30, 30 degree angle. Cause really we only need to know information about 30 degrees, 45s and 60s, and then we can apply it to everything else. Um, and if you could imagine, let's see if I can try and do this, that there's, and this is probably not gonna look great, but imagine there's like a unit, a circle going all the way around, right? Okay, so the, the idea of a unit circle is that the radius of the circle is one. Okay, so that hypotenuse, there's the radius of the circle. And based on special right triangles, what always ends up happening is the length of the X and Y, um, the legs of the right triangle, because here's a right angle here, there's always gonna be um, a set value for the, for the 30 degree angle, for a 45 degree triangle. Okay, I know that's not really drawn too well. Um, and then a 60. Okay, so these, these are not super accurate, like I said, but just wanna give myself room. But, um, if we can find the coordinates of the point here, here, and here, we will know um, the x and y values, the length of the leg. So let me let me uh, get this pattern, and then we'll kind of fit it all together. So if you remember, they all are something over two, okay, all the way around. And even if you go up to ninety degrees, okay, and zero degrees, they're the coordinates at zero degrees are just one, zero, because again, that radius is one. Um, the coordinates at 90 degrees are um, zero, one, because again, you're one unit up. And then the pattern, the trick, the easy way to get the other values is to just count from zero, okay, and work your way up. And I'm gonna do the Y values. I'm gonna start down here, and as I move up, the Y values are gonna go up one, up to root two, up to root three. Okay, and same thing for the x values. The x values start at zero here. As you go to the right, the x values go up one, root two, to root three. Okay, and what those values do for us, okay, again, the x coordinate, you can see it would be the length of that side right there, and the y coordinate would be the length of that side right there, okay? And since the hypotenuse is one, um, the x coordinate, Okay, being the adjacent side, right, and the y coordinate being the opposite side from this angle. Since the hypotenuse is one, right, if cosine, just remember cosine is always adjacent over hypotenuse, right? The adjacent side is the x coordinate and the hypotenuse is one. So that means that this fraction right here is the cosine for the angle 30 degrees. Okay. Similarly, the y value is the opposite side length. So the y coordinate there is the sine for 30 degrees. Okay, these other two values for the 45 degrees, the x is always the cosine and the y is always the sine. And then same thing for 60. Okay, and those are really the only ones you need to memorize on this whole thing. 
okay? There's, they're gonna ask questions for other angles, but they're always gonna refer back to one of these because the reference angle will need to be either 30, 45, or 60. Otherwise, you just gotta use a calculator to do it. Like those other problems when you were you know, solving for the sides and uh, angles, we had, to, we had to whip out a calculator, okay? But on the problems that you're expected to know an exact value of, you can just use these. Okay, and the last thing that might help on one of the problems or some of the problems, if they ever ask about tangent, remember tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? Remember TOA? Okay, so the opposite um, is the Y coordinate and the adjacent is the X coordinate. So if you know the X and the Y, then you can find tangent. So let's go back, let's go through some of these problems. I'll walk you through my, my thoughts. But this whole little pattern again is key to doing all of this stuff. Okay, the only thing that, that can happen is if when you get into different quadrants, some of the values are negative. Okay, so let's do a few examples on to our, our coordinate, uh, first quadrant that we drew, I mean, 30 degrees. We see the sine value um, is just the uh, one half. Okay, if you see it right over here, there's the sine of 30 degrees. Okay, so that's going to be our answer for that question there. Let's go back to quadrant one. Okay, think about, all right, cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, right? Okay, so root 3 over 2. Now, let's think we knew from here how to find the cosine of 30. Quadrant, everything's positive. Right, so which angle had a cosine that equaled half? Okay, so we're going to say, all right, I got this whole thing kind of figured out here. There it is, right? The angle would be 60 degrees. The cosine of 60 degrees is half. So I know my reference angle is going to be 60 degrees quadrant that we drew. Okay, so if we think about um, which angle would have a tangent, remember tangent is y over x, right? Which one would make it equal 1? Okay, so for something, for a fraction equal 1, the y and the x need to be equal to each other. Okay, that happens at 45 degrees, right? The x and the y are equal to each other. So the tangent of 45 degrees equals 1, right? Okay, so 45 is going to be what we're going to 